impacts and collisions 2012 question 5 B not a as is written up here B smooth sphere a mass m speed u collides with identical smooth sphere b which is at rest the direction of motion of a before and after impacts b, make angles alpha and beta respectively with the line of centers at the instant of impact the coefficient of restitution is e if tan alpha is equal to k tan beta find k in terms of e and that the magnitude of the impulse imparted to each sphere due to the collision is 7 over 8 7 over 8 mu cos alpha find the value of e and we were given this diagram the usual diagram that's given with these questions two circles the line of centers this is a b alpha and over this side beta so what do we know about tan beta we know that tan beta is going to be it's going to be loaded with my new velocity for in the i direction which changes and in the j direction there's going to be no change because this is my i vector so for a we have u is the u just let me double check do they give us u they do give us speed of u mass m so you and they're identical so both mass m so u cos alpha and the i we're adjacent to alpha here u cos alpha in the i direction plus u sine alpha in the j direction and that's the one that's not going to change that's my u sine alpha b is at rest so let's apply the principle of conservation momentum to these two spheres m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 so the mass to both m mu plus m by zero sorry my u is u cos alpha so just give myself some room m u cos alpha plus m times zero because b is at rest is equal to m v1 plus m v2 dividing by m i'm going to get u cos alpha is equal to v1 plus v2 newton's experimental law will enable me to solve for v1 and v2 v1 minus v2 over u1 minus u2 is equal to minus e so v1 minus v2 is equal to minus e times u cos alpha and there will be a minus zero in there which you don't really need so v1 minus v2 is equal to minus e u cos alpha so bringing this guy down we're going to have v1 plus v2 is equal to u cos alpha so 2v1 cancelling out my v2s is equal to well we have a u cos alpha in both of them so we'll write it out minus the u cos alpha plus cos alpha and then we'll factor out the cos alpha so we actually have a u cos alpha u cos alpha by minus e plus 1 is equal to 2v1 so v1 is equal to u cos alpha and we reverse this around just so it's a bit tidier over 2 solving for v2 we're going to have from this equation here v2 is equal to u cos alpha minus v1 so v2 is going to be u cos alpha you may see what this is in advance but just work it out first so it's going to be u cos alpha over 2 so taking this in two single fractions got plus minus minus so the first part is u cos alpha over 2 and then minus e u cos alpha over 2 so we're going to have 
u cos alpha over 2. That minus is in front of both of these. So we're going to have plus eu cos alpha over 2. So all that's happening is we'll get a 1 plus e instead of a 1 minus e. You may have seen that in advance. V2 is equal to u cos alpha times 1 plus e all over 2, which gives u cos alpha over 2 plus eu cos alpha over 2. So that's my v1 and v2. What do we know about the tan of beta? Well, we wrote it up top here. We wrote about the tan of beta being u sine alpha over v1. So let's put that in. The tan of beta is equal to u sine alpha over v1, which is equal to u sine alpha over well, we could write over this whole thing here. What's going to happen to the 2? The 2 is going to come up on top, as you can probably see. So it's going to be times 2 over u cos alpha times 1 minus e. So my u's cancel. My sine alpha over cos alpha becomes tan alpha, and I have a 2 on top. So I'm going to end up with a 2 tan alpha on top. And on the bottom, just a 1 minus e. We're also told something about tan alpha in the question. We're told tan alpha is equal to k tan beta, and we're looking for k in terms of e. That's where the k comes in. So tan alpha is k tan beta. So we get 2k tan beta over 1 minus e is equal to tan beta. From up here, I just didn't write it down all the time. So dividing by tan beta. We're going to get 1 is equal to 2k over 1 minus e. So 1 minus e is equal to 2k. So k is equal to 1 minus e over 2. And that's k in terms of e. Part 2 of this question. So the magnitude of the impulse. Okay, so what do we know about impulse? We know impulse is mv minus mu and we may as well take sphere b because the u is zero so it'll make it a little bit easier so we want we want v2 then for this and the mass is m so v2 here we go so impulse is equal to mv minus mu this u is zero so we're just going to have this u cos alpha which I left out by 1 plus e over 2 and we're told that that's equal to 7 over 8 wasn't it 7 over 8 mu cos alpha 7 over 8 mu cos alpha is equal to mv so I have my m that's equal to m so I've got my mu's, I can cancel. So if I multiply across by, by 8, I'm going to get 7 cos alpha is equal to 4 cos alpha times 1 plus e. That's getting rid of the 8 on the left, and putting an 8 on top would make this a 4 on this side. So if I divide across by cos alpha, I'm going to get 7 is equal to 4 times 1 plus e. And we're asked to find the value of e. So 7 is equal to 4 plus 4e. So 4e is equal to 3. And e would then be 3 quarters.